Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Johnson. We can look at Mount Rushmore as individuals who have been on the forefront of creating change on a large scale here in America. And in the same way, Nick Saban is an individual who just might be on college football's Mount Rushmore, leading innovation at the local level. As an Alabama native myself, I'm quite familiar with Nick Saban's story and what all led to him succeeding in college. But to, in mind of his recent success, recent stretch, a stretch of success at Alabama, I've delved more deeply into the topics of what his mannerisms are and what really pushes him to succeed at the college level. Saban is an individual who, after failing to succeed in the NFL, has gone on to create somewhat of a dynasty at the University of Alabama. And in the same way, he's also been able to balance his philanthropic efforts through his uh, organization, or through his nonprofit organization, Nick's Kids, as well as maintaining a strong, stable family life at home. But first, let's look at how Saban has succeeded in college sports, specifically at the University of Alabama, despite the controversy that went into him joining the Alabama Crimson Tide. So Saban was an individual who, long ago, he went to Kent State. He was a cornerback for the Kent State Flashes. And from there, he led many different organizations. He was the defensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns. He then went on to coach for the Toledo Rockets, went on to the Michigan State Spartans. And in fact, Michigan State was where he didn't necessarily succeed at the level of which he's done so lately. He went seven and six often. He was even just above 500. However, his great successes came in the biggest and the largest moments there, beating Ohio State, Michigan, many other teams. And there is where he really found his niche. He went on from there to coach for the LSU Tigers, where he won his first national championship in the SEC. After that success, he went to the Miami Dolphins, a great opportunity for Saban to further his career as a, as a coach and as a leader of men. In the NFL, he didn't quite succeed to the level of which he would have liked. He was a below 500 coach. He did not meet many of the expectations that the South Florida community had. And after a short time there, he ended up leaving the Miami Dolphins for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And in fact, Saban insisted multiple times that he would not leave the Miami Dolphins. However, after Mr. Shula, Mike Shula, left the Alabama Crimson Tide being fired in 2006, this, uh, the fall or the winter of 2006, Saban joined the Alabama Crimson Tide in January of 2007. And the rest is pretty much history as far as that goes. He has led the Alabama Crimson Tide to numerous accolades, five national championships in nine years. Heisman winners that the university have never seen. You can see their rival Auburn winning multiple Heismans. Bo Jackson, Cam Newton, those individuals. But Mark Ingram, Derek, Derek Henry, two individuals who coming to the university, not necessarily anyone expecting them to win a Heisman Trophy, but he has been able to grow those individuals and bring them to levels of success that they've now been on to bring on to the NFL. Before the ink was dry on his contract, he was already in the process of creating a new regime at the University of Alabama. He has stopped at nothing to create success at the collegiate level. So since coming to Alabama, Saban has seen that the sky is the limit into his impact in the, the community level. Specifically, we can look at Nick's Kids, an organization, a nonprofit, that he started when he was at Michigan State in 1998. Nick's Kids helps support individuals and causes and many other different organizations to gain the support that they need, to gain the awareness that they need. To get the ball rolling, he joined his wife, Terry, which we'll discuss a little bit later, to create an environment where individuals hear to have their stories be heard. And over their time since 1998, they've been able to donate over $6 million to worthy causes around the globe, around the nation. And that, that includes at Michigan State, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, even in Miami, and now in Tuscaloosa. Each of these situations, he's been able to use his charitable background to better his environments. And that's all, of course, according to Burke in 2016. While continuing his hunger for success, Saban has also maintained a, an amazingly <clears throat> stable family life at home. Here we can see Saban with his daughter Kristen at her wedding a couple years ago. And in fact, many, uh, many have come to believe that Saban, Saban is an individual who is very family-oriented. Now, he may, he may seem like a dominant figure on the field, 
But his wife, Terry, many acknowledge her to be the, almost a negotiator for him. If, if he wants to do anything, Miss Terry has to approve it. And Miss Terry is the driving factor for many of his, for many of his decisions. And in fact, Miss Terry is one of his greatest motivators. And this is, what, this is the true example of what a family legacy could be in sports. And we can look at, their at his two children as well. Specifically, his daughter, Kristen, she graduated from the University of Alabama. She has since maintained a job for the, uh, alongside the University of Alabama Athletic Department, managing basically all the football events and so on. And even his son, Nicholas, he, of course, was a former Lynn Fighting Knight. He went there briefly as uh, his dad was coaching for the Miami Dolphins. And as a fighting knight, he saw how he could grow his father's legacy, maybe as, as a different path. He's not in sports, but he's growing his family's legacy in, in a different way than anybody else could have imagined for their family. And that's all, of course, according to Brentos in 2018. So I hope today's discussion shows you exactly why Nick Saban is an individual we should honor and one that we should pay tribute to. One that has established himself as a once-in-a-lifetime innovator in the sports industry. One that we cannot pass up. While the NFL may be the calling card for some, Saban has chosen to tackle sports and chosen to tackle the issues of today through growing collegiate athletes. And done so with high efficiency. Whether it's been on the field with Derrick Henry, A.J. McCarron, Mark Ingram, Amari Cooper, whoever else you'd like to name, he succeeded, or off the field with Nick's kids, his family, growing the community around them. Saban has been able to implement his, philo his philanthropic beliefs in the society around him while maintaining that strong family that is an example for individuals around the world. Hearing this man's story is more than just impactful. It is an example that any individual from any area whether it's the small town in West Virginia in which he's from, or any other area, no matter the size in which the town they are in, whether it's Tuscaloosa, Baton Rouge, Lansing, Michigan, they can all take the ball and run with it and create a change that will be impactful. Thank you.